a lot of people get confused with uh, basically assuming last mile delivery and supply chain these are the same things no these are two completely different things though yes last mile delivery could be an overall part of the overall supply chain and logistics ecosystem but the skill set which you have in last mile and the skill set which you have in supply chain these are two separate different things supply chain is really really a very very wide ocean you might be doing land transport you might be doing uh, sea transport you might be doing air cargo uh so there's last mile over there but that's pretty complicated over there you're talking about days and weeks or in food delivery in last mile here you're talking about seconds and minutes so and you have thousands or millions of data points which are available in an efficiency quite a lot of things uh but if i talk about it in detail so i started uh, back then uh, with my first company as zoom car which is uh, india's first and largest cell ride car rental company now and uh, i i was hired as an intern over there back in 2015 and i walked my way up to a director level over there within those four years and i worked on three different business models so we started as uh, a cell ride car rental marketplace then uh, basically we were uh, buying cars on our own entirely after one year we have realized it's a very asset heavy model for us so we basically changed our business model a little bit to a host and a guest program wherein someone like you and me maninder if we have our own car and if that car is sitting idle that could be listed on zoom cars platform and uh, whenever that car gets booking uh, both the host and the guest share revenue at the same time basically zoom car gets some part of that revenue then uh, we figured out we are only into four wheelers and we wanted to be a multimodal transport company so we launched india's first e-bike sharing company back then i think in 2017 or 18 and i was the one who launched that so i, I ended up launching the business in 1011 country uh, not countries 1011 cities and uh, we partnered with uh, smart cities as well in india which is uh, which was basically a campaign to have 100 smart cities in in india yes. and uh, by doing that partnership i was able to basically get access to those 100 smart cities though we did not launch in all those cities but we ended up launching in 1011 cities and i was able to scale the business to 10 to 11000 e bikes at that point of time and it became basically pretty popular back then in india while i was doing that uh, i got an opportunity from a company named grab in uh, singapore uh, which is a super app over there of southeast asia and i launched those electronic e scooters or per- personal mobility devices whether it's an e scooter or a e bike or an e moped over there and i launched those services those shared urban mobility services across singapore indonesia philippines malaysia multiple countries then i moved to dubai and uh, i started working in talabat during covid time uh, thanks to the covid time i think we worked phenomenally well during that point of time uh, deliveries really boomed as everyone know during that point of time and there was a lot to do so there was a lot of demand however as a business probably we were not that ready or we were not expecting such a huge demand supply was a big issue at that point of time because the borders were locked so demand was there how to arrange supply how to arrange those thousands of couriers to be added on a monthly basis then we ended up adding those thousands of couriers but then our systems our processes were not ready so we have seen a lot of safety concerns efficiency concerns customer experience concerns so I have learned all that during that point of time and uh, that was a great exposure for me and at one point of time i was managing hundreds and thousands of deliveries uh, with over 20000 couriers and with over 15000 partners in that food delivery network then uh, i joined a company named yango which is a global uh, brand name in technology world and uh, i was hired to launch their delivery business across the region and i started last year in may with UAE we ended up launching same day next year delivery services this year we have launched express delivery services as well we do uh, i think we got some very good traction in the market we have hundreds of couriers right now hundreds of partners and we got some massive plans for the region for this year and, and next year and uh, we are one marketplace wherein we provide uh, 
all the different delivery drives through one single portal, be it Express, be it same day, be it next day. And uh, we act as a middleman between the clients on one side and between the couriers on one side. So let's say it's an e-commerce company or a food delivery company or a grocery company. We get those orders uh, transmitted to our system. Then our system finds a courier uh, as per the delivery criteria, as per the pickup location. Then that order gets assigned to a courier and then the courier ends up delivering those orders. So that's what I've been doing, man. Uh, I think enjoying the ride so far and uh, really looking forward to uh, have a chat with you today. Thanks, thanks. And uh, you are already working in a very interesting and uh, nice uh, uh, part of the supply chain because you mentioned about customer, you mentioned about uh, uh, deliveries, uh, you mentioned about uh, managing a very uh, good, important portfolio while you were working with Zoomcar or the automotive industry, you scaled it very well. So when we link the customer success with what happens at the backside, I think you have done everything. So, so that part of it, I think we will explore more today. And sure. So, so to, to start with, so last mile, you mentioned about next day deliveries, express deliveries, multiple deliveries you mentioned when you were talking about your uh, current role. So if we can demystify it, what exactly it means in simple uh, terms and how it is related to the deliveries part, food delivery specifically, and what are the key challenges or what happens basically in this part of the supply chain? Sure, man. First of all, let me explain uh, what exactly is last mile. A lot of friends uh, who would be hearing us, uh, this term might be new for them, though they might be receiving uh, hundreds of deliveries on a monthly basis, but they might not know what exactly the last mile in the overall delivery value chain means. So last mile precisely in food delivery, it refers to the final stage of the delivery process where the food is transported from, let's say, a restaurant or to a grocery store or to a pharmacy store or to a cloud kitchen or to a dark store to the customer's doorstep. And this last leg of delivery journey is very crucial in ensuring customer satisfaction, efficiency in food delivery services. So imagine uh, you as a customer uh, place an order. Uh, you would need that order to be delivered on time. You would expect the courier to be behaving well with you. Uh, you would expect uh, the technology to be available on the app for you to be able to find out where my order is, where the courier is, whether it is on time, it is not on time. You might need a functionality on the app to be able to allow you to have an interaction either with customer care team or directly with the rider or directly with the merchant. So uh, I think these many aspects come to my mind at this point of time. But last mile, I would say, I think I heard once from a renowned person in UAE, he always say the experience which you provide in the last mile, it leads to basically, it is the first mile to the hearts of your customers. So if you are messing up with last mile, then basically you would be messing up with the customers. So though you might have a very good experience on the app, you might have the best options available on the app for the customers to choose. But if the delivery experience is not good, that's where the rider ends up interacting with the customer. That's where customers see something in physical. And that last leg of the delivery experience has to be top notch for those customers to come back to you. And if I talk about the significance of last mile in there, look, I can divide it into probably three, four parts. One is customer experience. I talked about it. So that is the only place where the customer interacts directly with the delivery service, directly with the rider. Imagine uh, you placed an order for your wife on, a, on her birthday and the rider knows about it. And uh, when the rider delivers that cake or whatever you have ordered, he ends up wishing happy birthday or he ends up saying wish you a merry christmas happy new year i think the kind of experience which you would have it would be phenomenal so basically uh training those couriers and uh making them a part of the journey rather than just training them on doing more and more transactions training them on uh, how to interact with the customer if there is a special moment basically uh let the customer feel special about it then second would be competitive advantage. So in food delivery, generally the market 
in most of the markets is very competitive. There is not just one player which is available in the market. So your last mile provides you a competitive advantage. If you talk about UAE, I think when I started back then, four years before, the delivery time used to be in the range of 40 to 50 minutes on an average. But by the time I moved on, it was on an average 30 to 35 minutes for the entire country. And imagine if you are able to deliver hundreds and thousands of orders within 30 minutes or let's say within 28 minutes. And most of the time you are not late, not early by more than five minutes. That's where you have an advantage. That's where people would remember you. If the customer need not to reach out to you to ask, where is my order? Where is the rider? Uh, the order has been spilled over. The order has been damaged. That's where customers remember. And that's where they come back to you. Now, Third would be, I would say, brand image. Uh, again, if the delivery is successful during the last mile, it ends up creating a good brand image for you and it would ensure customers would likely return back to you. And last would be, by the way, the last mile delivery for food delivery companies, it is the highest cost element in the entire revenue which they make. I think the cost is not less than 30 to 40% of the entire GMV which food delivery companies are making. So if your last mile operations is pretty much efficient, you would be able to control your cost, which are associated uh, with the driver, with the vehicle, with the fuel, with all the optimizations which you have done during your delivery cycle, with the preparation time of the food delivery vendor, the locations of pickup, the locations of drop off. There is a lot of optimization which can be done, which can drastically reduce your cost of delivery and which would Basically, you would be able to save some bucks, which you can invest in marketing or you can give some freebies to the customers. And that's where basically it becomes a very, very important uh, factor for you for the overall business. Okay. Okay. So thanks for putting it in a framework. So you mentioned about three areas, customer success, where you gave that very good example, which is applicable to all of us about uh, the person delivering and giving a special message. Uh, to the person yep. who is getting that uh, parcel or uh, uh, courier. Second yeah. is competitive advantage and third is brand image. Uh, if I talk about the competitive advantage to share an, an example where you said that if earlier when you were working, the timing was somewhere around 40-50 minutes and then it reduced to 30-35 minutes. Can you explore more on that and how that happens? Because um, being a supply chain professional, Lots of work must be happening behind yep. the door to optimize this part. So how does that happen? Like it looks easier to say, but I'm sure whenever you must have done it, it must have been so difficult to manage. So if you can share about your own experience, how does that? that thanks for asking me uh, and thanks for taking me back in those times. Uh, so look, uh, it is not just one thing. I would say it is not even five things, it is not even 10 things. There were hundreds of things which I had to do, which we had to do to basically bring that delivery time down drastically by 30-40% in the market. So, but I would be able to name probably topmost factors which uh, ended up resulting into such a drastic improvement in the delivery time. So one definitely is the demand supply planning. So food delivery as a business, basically, it has certain peaks. So you have a lunch peak, your, your curve looks like this. So as your day starts, basically, uh, you go into the lunch peak uh, starting at 11 a.m. or 12 noon and your basically demand start increasing. Then as you go into 2 p.m., 3 p.m., the, the demand starts coming down. And then uh, basically for next two to three hours until 5 p.m., the demand is almost flat. You don't need any supply. Then starting 5 p.m., 6 p.m., all of a sudden you see a huge peak and there is a highest peak which comes at 7 p.m which goes until 10, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And after that, it's again uh, drastically starts coming down. And overnight, there are hardly any orders to be delivered. So imagine when you have such a peak during lunch and during dinner, you need to have such a peak of supply available with you as well at that point of time. So you need to carefully, you basically, you need to do predictive analysis. We used to have machine learning algorithms, which used to tell us like in next two weeks, in which area, in which city, at what time, roughly how many orders, how many deliveries we are expecting. And based on that, we used to define our supply. Our system used to automatically tell us at this particular area, at this particular time, these many couriers are needed. Now, 
we used to basically uh, uh, do that uh, supply planning, do that capacity planning. And a couple of days before, we used to see, okay, during these hours, we are short of this much supply. During those hours, we have a buffer of this much supply. Then we used to run certain uh, campaigns, incentive campaigns with the supply. We used to tell the couriers, for example, if you work from this hour to this hour, instead of X, I would be paying you 1.2X, 1.5X, 2X. That used to basically fill the demand gap or fill the supply gap, which we used to have during those hours. And uh, we used to basically overlap the supply demand with basically the real demand that we have. So mapping these two curves uh, really ensures, uh, really helps you identify uh, at what particular hour you might still have a shortage in supply. And you would be able to uh, proactively solve that supply shortage by running certain incentive schemes or hiring more couriers or moving couriers from some other times when they are not needed. Okay. Uh, so removing their ships from that point of time and giving them ships at the time when more and more uh, supply is needed. That is one. Second is, uh, I think in food delivery, uh, you need to deliver at least within 10 to 15 kilometers of your zone, right? And imagine you have 100, like for a small business, when you are just starting, you might not have the density of orders. You might not have the density of the restaurant, but you would need a bare minimum density of couriers to be available. Otherwise, the pickup time, the courier would reach late to the pickup, the courier would reach late to the customer. If you have a buffer in supply, if you have more couriers deployed, that means the courier reach faster to the pickup point and to the drop off point. So adding more and more restaurants, adding more and more customers, increasing the density of the demand, increasing the it helps increasing the density of the supply as well. So when in order, so for example, let's imagine I'm a customer, I'm in JLT right now, I'm placing an order from JLT X cluster. Within that cluster, there has to be 10, 15 couriers minimum. If the order has been pushed to a restaurant, which is also in X cluster. So if the courier is near the pickup point, that means courier will reach over there directly in the next two to three minutes. He would pick up his order, then he would go to the drop-off point. So increasing the density by creating more and more demand and by adding more and more options of restaurants on your app, it helps you deliver faster. Third thing which comes to my mind is uh, basically rider experience, uh, providing a very good uh, experience to the riders on the platform is the key. So your riders define how your customers or how your restaurants uh, are 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 going to like the service which is being provided by your platform. So gaining the hearts, winning the hearts rather of the riders, providing the the best experience on your platform, uh, paying them on time, uh, increasing their earnings, increasing their earnings on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, uh, increasing the components of the earning, gamifying the earnings pay them more if they deliver more orders and uh, have a performance-based payment scheme for the riders on top of their basic pay. I think that's what uh, ensures you are able to uh, deliver faster. One more thing I would like to share from restaurant point of view, from merchant point of view, because what used to happen back then is the rider arrives, but the food is not ready. So the rider has to for five minutes, 10 minutes, and that's the time which goes wasted. Uh, no one gets any help out of it. So uh, we had to deploy some mechanisms over there, now, which ensure as soon as the order is ready, the courier should be arriving within within that time frame of two to three minutes. So the courier should not come early. He should not be waiting uh, on the vendor's premise. At the same time, courier should not be coming once the food is prepared. Courier should not be coming after 10 minutes. Otherwise, the quality of the food would get damaged. So we devised... Uh, basically a mechanism to what used to happen back then is the rider arrives, but the food is not ready. So the rider has to for five minutes, 10 minutes, and that's the time which goes wasted. Uh, no one gets any help out of it. So uh, we had to deploy some mechanisms over there, now, which ensured as soon as the order is ready, the courier should be arriving within, within that time frame of two to three minutes. So the courier should not come early. He should not be waiting uh, on the vendor's premise. 
at the same time courier should not be coming once the food is prepared courier should not be coming after 10 minutes otherwise the quality of the food would get damaged so we devised uh basically a mechanism to uh, to be able to predict the preparation time of the restaurants and then based on that preparation time we used to allocate riders who would be able to arrive to the restaurant within that preparation time of the restaurant so we basically save quite a lot of minutes over there one last thing from customers point of view so customers location and how the location is being provided by the customer is also really very important so imagine uh, you are placing uh, you are living in burj khalifa and you are placing an order from burj khalifa it takes on an average 15 minutes for a courier to park their bike or their car at the basement or on the ground floor of Burj Khalifa and go to that particular floor because there are a lot of security concerns. There are a lot of things which the courier would have to do. He would have to go through the security gate, then park his vehicle, then go to the reception, tell them which uh, basically on which particular floor the customer is uh, living. Uh, then they would be calling the customer, customer would be saying, okay, I'm coming down this, that, or you send the food upstairs. And imagine if the location was wrong at that point of time. So what happens a lot of times is the rider arrives to the top of point and then uh, he could not find the location. Then he calls the customer, hey, sir, I've reached, but I can't find your location. And then the customer say, hey, man, sorry, I was, I'm, I'm in the adjacent building. So he has to go down again. He has to find that building, he has to park his uh, vehicle again and find the customer again. So he ends up wasting those five to 10 minutes over there. So uh, precise uh, and basically accurate location of the customer along with detailed pen, detailed addresses, text, it always helps uh, deliver faster. So these four things uh, top top uh, comes to my mind at this point of time, which really helped me optimize the delivery time of the hundreds and thousands of orders, which I was able to deliver during that point of time with a faster delivery time. Okay. So, um, we cannot uh, leave any of these four aspects in a standalone matter, which we know very well, but still, uh, for you, from your experience, um, we talked about merchant, we talked about the platform, we talked about riders and we talked about customers and we had, we discussed about the blend of the technology and everything. Uh, from the weightage point of view, which one of these is the most difficult to manage? Definitely the radio side of it. So, uh, especially, uh, especially in UAE or I would say rather India as well, because, uh, look, uh, your demand, uh, might increase in next one week, but it is not that easy to add supply within that week itself. Uh, right. Because you have certain compliance things which you need to check then you need to train the courier then courier needs to know how the uh, how he has to manage the app i think bare minimum it takes 7 to 10 days to onboard a courier on the platform train them and for them to be able to basically start doing deliveries at the same time to be a top notch brand in the market i think your rider or the experience which your riders are providing to the customers that is what decides the fate of the company that is what decide uh, how the customers are going to perceive uh, the brand name how the customers are going to come back to your platform so for me uh, not biased though i was managing operations i'm still managing operations for a delivery company but i think uh, as uh, the rider operations uh, also controls 30 to 40 percent of the overall GMV which is being generated, they are the only phase which is being seen by the customers, by the restaurants. I think that is the most critical aspect uh, in in this overall business to be controlled. Uh, you might be able to create demand, but if there is no supply, you might not be able to do anything. You might have even have the supply with you, but if the supply is not trained, you might not be able to provide best experience to your customers. You still might have the supply, you still might have the train coolers with you, but if they don't log in, uh, demand would be there, the orders will never be delivered. So playing around uh, with that, um, uh, letting the riders feel the platform really thinks about you. This is the right platform for you. This is the best platform for you. You are learning, you are gaining what you wanted to do, you are able to do. Their future is being improved. They are able to help their families. That is what decides the fate uh, of the residents, of the customers, and 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 the platforms as well. Okay, okay. Um, 
if i'll talk about the, the same part which you mentioned about uh, riders is it right to assume that for a country like india or maybe china where the population is huge onboarding riders is easier but the training is very difficult or is it just an assumption that is not the case uh no look it matters it varies from country to country and in india for example uh, you can be a rider i can be a rider however in ua it is not the same in ua uh, uh most of the riders come from asian market so most of the riders that we have in ua they come from india from pakistan bangladesh africa and then first of all uh, when they come to the country they need to get a visa then they need to get their driving license then they be driving for the first time in the country it takes them to do 3 months to basically learn the rules of uae then they need to learn uh, basically how to operate the app as well so basically onboarding is not a challenge but the onboarding time is lengthy in countries like uae okay. however if i compare that with uh, with india i think uh, uh, onboarding riders over there might not be that challenging might not be that time consuming however training the couriers because uh they are driving those vehicles for a long time they feel uh, they know all the road rules uh uh and all and uh, as a market uh, i think these concepts are very new and uh training uh, becomes a challenge for such a market because uh, like look in india you might be onboarding thousands of couriers monthly and training all of them uh, you might need to figure out whether you want to train them offline you want to train them online uh, online generally doesn't work if the courier is uh, newly doing this exercise for the first time generally it works when the courier is on boarded operating for an year or so and then new about the new features about any new things in the business can be talked to them online so i think it it varies country by country so in co- some countries onboarding is the challenge or onboarding time is the challenge or cost of onboarding is the challenge in some countries training or the modes of training or the willingness of the couriers to be trained could be a challenge or the language as well i can share a personal example i was uh, i was in a company named chalo and uh, i was given an opportunity to basically uh digitize thousands of buses in bangalore and bangalore is the second largest bus network after london so i was managing 6500 buses the first thing which i had to do was installing gps devices in all those buses at the same time train those 11000 conductors which were given a post machine for the first time okay. before that they were issuing those paper tickets and uh, i would say majority of them they were speaking in the regional language they they were not very well versed with the english language which was available on the post machine so first was basically a reluctance i'm operating as a conductor for 10 15 years i feel that is the best thing to do i don't want to change myself change state time and change the stuff again of uh, making your training available in regional languages uh, not forcing uh, the riders or the drivers to be able to adapt themselves uh, as per the new languages and all as per the new uh, protocols as per the new platforms i think there you you would be inviting a disaster so adapting more and more with the needs of the riders over there for training and also basically becomes an advantage so uh, it it varies country by country it, it varies uh, scenario by scenario man in the not same all across yeah yeah and sure and sure thanks thanks for sharing this example as well from this example the change management part i will cover in upcoming questions that is very interesting to know so a lot is happening in this space as well you are in the space so you know very well if you want to so we will use the same framework which you shared very well the merchant uh, then the app uh, then the riders and then the customers yeah. so if you have to share one key innovation which has happened recently or is about to happen uh, in these four areas which will lead to better efficiency better customer experience and if you can share uh, for these areas like we i just want to understand what is happening in the space because we all are customers so what is what should we expect in the future or what is so definitely uh, look man uh, 
I would say one example or one innovation each from all the all these four pillars of the overall ecosystem. Let me start with merchants. So I think everyone is talking about sustainability and uh, I think a lot of merchants uh, these days, they have started using sustainable packaging. So when you order that uh, noodle or when you order your soup, it comes in that bowl. And uh, a lot of restaurants have started using such enable packaging over there. So your coffee cup or the bag in which your food is delivered, that is basically a sustainable packaging being used by those merchants. That is one. Second is the restaurants have become more and more smart uh, these days uh, in terms of preparing the food. So they have basically variable variability in the staff availability for them uh, throughout the week. So they don't keep same staff count all throughout the week again food is uh, more of a business during lunch and evening but during friday and saturdays it is always picking up but during the rest of the days the demand is not that similar as compared to the weekend so there is no point in keeping the same stuff over weekends as compared to weekdays there is no point in keeping the same stuff all throughout the days you need more people during lunch during night during Fridays, during Saturdays. And basically, a lot of restaurants are coming out with a mix of having an in-dined menu, then basically having a delivery menu. Uh, a lot of restaurants have started resorting to cloud kitchens as well, wherein uh, they would like to focus only on delivery aspect of the business. They don't want those fixed assets to be there. So restaurants have become smart in managing their staff as per the demand forecast which is being made available to them by the platforms and platforms also share like and in next one week these many orders you are expecting so basically have your staff available accordingly now if we talk about uh, platforms so and since the topic of today is last mile so earlier back in days i think four or five years before the tracking of the delivery and the tracking of the rider was not available or basically it was not that laser focused so uh, now you you order not just from not just basically food you order from any e-commerce website as well i think most of the apps would be able to provide you uh, when your order is supposed to deliver they would be sending you real-time updates like your order has left from the restaurant or from the hub now your courier could be arriving uh, within the next 30 minutes or one hour or within that time window. And you would be able to track the courier on the app as well. You would be able to have a chat with the courier. Probably if you want to say to the courier, hey man, I'm not at home, uh, deliver my parcel on my doorstep. Or I'm not at home, deliver my parcel to the person who live upstairs. Or uh, my kids uh, is sleeping, please don't ring the bell. I think all those functionalities like delivery instructions, uh, chat between the rider and the customer is available. So a lot of uh, innovation has, in, has been done by platforms. Uh, now, if we talk about uh, the delivery part of it, not rider aspect of the business, but how deliveries are being done. So... A lot of companies have started focusing or at least testing by doing deliveries through three different mechanisms. One is, I think there are some trials which are happening in India and UAE already, uh, deliveries through robots. So if the distance of the delivery is within, let's say, two to three kilometers and the infrastructure within those areas or communities is good, definitely those deliveries can be done through robots. At the same time, a lot of companies are testing drone deliveries in certain areas uh, where approvals have been provided and some of the deliveries are being done through autonomous vehicles as well. I would call them sustainable deliveries, so sustain sustainability in the last mile which is coming by choosing the right kind of the vehicle. Now, if we talk about customers, I think uh, for customers, a lot of innovation uh, has been again done by by platforms and how customers receive better experience from these platforms. So as, as I said, there is a tracking which is available uh, uh, for the customers. Now customers have become so much smart, they keep on checking where the courier is going as soon as he leaves from the restaurants. So because uh, generally when I place an order, I know where the restaurant is, I know where am I. And uh, a lot of times, either because of traffic or because of some other issue, or there are some riders which are not up to the mark, they take a detour, they go to some other place, probably eat food, have a smoke or do something, and then only they come to you. 
So now in today's world, customer has become really smart and platforms have really provided those options. The customers keep on tracking on the app whether the courier is really coming towards me or the courier is going somewhere else. And as soon as the courier sees the rider is not moving or his bike is not moving or the tracking is not moving, then they reach out to the customer care team or they reach out to the rider, him and where are you? So uh, not an innovation. I think uh, this is something which, which makes the customer smart and which basically put pressure on the overall ecosystem to have an efficient uh, delivery system being, being made available to the customers. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll touch base one thing from from what you have just explained. Uh, do you think that um, it is very important, like for some customers might be getting the uh, getting the items immediately after you order. For example, um, in India, we have Zepto. It is like groceries and everything. Now I use regu uh, Zepto regularly. I have Blinkit installed in my phone. Uh, then there is Swiggy uh, option as well, where you can order stuff, groceries and all. Now, sometimes I need items immediately. For example, I need, I want to have a tea at 4 p.m. Yeah. And I want to have a bun maska. And if I don't have bun um, in my fridge. So then Zapto makes a, sense, makes a good sense because I will get the item immediately. But yeah. These cases might be, my, my case might not be representing the masses. Yeah. What is your experience, this part of the supply chain where this delivery uh, section is going, where everything should be delivered immediately. Yeah. Is it sustainable as a whole, like uh, reducing the time as much as possible? I just want you to help me understand the from the cost angle as well. Because sure. business has to be sustainable. You can... Sure, Delivery, but yes, definitely money in there. So look, customer behavior is changing with time. So back in time when we used to be a kid, uh, I think deliveries used to happen within four to five days. I think, for example, I, I come from a tier two city. My deliveries used to come either from Delhi or from Bombay or from Bangalore. And basically it used to move between hubs. And I think the food delivery concept never existed probably 10 years before. Uh, we used to go to the restaurants and we were patient to basically come get things our our own way and pandemic has really changed the behavior of the consumer so even not everyone was asking for everything to be delivered at their home right so it started with e-commerce it started with food deliveries but during pandemic every single thing was being delivered to us so be it your iphone be it your shirt be it your food be it your grocery be it your masks be it any single thing so really people got habitual of basically being on their app being on their phone and whatever they need they wanted it to be delivered and uh, as i shared with you during that point of time when more and more deliveries were increasing it was very important for the companies to reduce the delivery time and do more deliveries within the total time which is available with them right now, what started happening was the deliveries started happening faster. When deliveries started happening faster, so people started receiving their orders in 30 minutes, some orders in 20 minutes as well. As the density of the restaurant, the customer has increased. For example, people have become uh, like lazy sitting at their home. Even if the grocery store is on your ground floor, you're placing an order from the app, probably getting a discount of 5, 10, around 5, 10%. Just to get the discount, you are placing an order. And that has created these habits uh, in people. Now, these habits have been uh, observed by companies like ours. Like, for example, people are ordering uh, uh, their bread. People are having a party and they don't have cold ring. They are missing up two cold rings. They need it in the next 10 minutes. They need it in the next 10, 15 minutes. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm preparing that curry, but uh, I had fallen short of salt, which I was not aware of. So that demand has arisen, I would say, during pandemic time only. It is not that old. It is not older than three to four years. And that has really changed the behavior of the people. Now, people have started expecting. A lot of companies are working on this, by the way. There is a new concept which is supposed to come in future. Quick commerce of e-commerce. Even your e-commerce products, even the goods which you wear, Companies are planning to even deliver those things in the next 20 minutes, in the next 30 minutes. 
now you you talked about the cost element of that as well look uh what uh how companies achieve sustainability over there in terms of cost so what happens is uh earlier there used to be a one mega distribution center which used to be in the center of the city and basically all the orders used to get delivered from that mega dc to to several customers which are available all across the city now rather than investing into that mega uh, distribution center companies have invested not even invested they took like spaces of 2000 3000 square feet and they took those spaces on rent and they divided the city let's say into 10 parts now those 10 parts got pockets of different customers as well now how they divided the city into 10 pockets based on the demand which is coming from different customers so this is one area where most of the demand comes another area where most of the demand comes and they started placing those dark stores or those small mini distribution centers in the center of those areas so now your distribution center is pretty close to your customer let's say 2 to 3 kilometers or max to max 5 kilometers and generally at these dark stores you keep the products which move very very fast so for example your uh, your grocery items milk uh your uh, grocery items or your daily consumption items which you might need at the very very last moment uh they don't keep more than 3 to 5000 skus uh, at those dark stores and what they do is they already know how many orders they are supposed to receive tomorrow or in next one week and they already keep those riders that supply standing outside those dark stores Mm-hmm. so it's all predictive analysis it's all like how many orders based on the previous experience of the orders historical orders they already know how many orders are supposed to receive what would be the delivery time how much supply i would need so demand supply management becomes better in the beginning i would say for first 6 or 12 months the cost is not that efficient you need to invest into that but as you are able to do more and more deliveries through that one dark store i think the unit economics start making sense okay okay so i touch base that change management point here with a different angle so you mentioned that um, it's a behavior thing actually we we all know that and for companies they have to cater to that and it's a, it's an opportunity so why to lose that for this behavior uh, change somewhere i i feel that it's kind of a pull not a push because my behavior is changing yeah directly it's a push also because companies are making things so easy for customers that they are becoming lazy day by day they want to sell they want to sell more and more right so yeah, like they will be available to you whatever you need that's their job so is is there any kind of change management element here as well like what companies does okay this behavior is now changing slowly slowly so we should do this just to make it permanent rather than customers slowly slowly uh again moving to something else just to make this permanent so that there will be a revenue stream for this as well does that happen from the chain management point of view no definitely a lot of things and and that's where uh, these analysis uh, and basically uh, predictive analysis again comes in place so uh we keep on analyzing thousands of data points uh on 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 a daily basis and uh, for example uh like uh, i will tell you a classic example so in the delivery sector there is always this confusion whether you provide more options to the customers in terms of restaurants those restaurants could be even 50 kilometers far okay. your order might get delivered in 1 hour or 2 hour or you should only be delivering max to max within 30 minutes right so uh and that again varies from area to area so we did some uh, surveys in the past and we used to believe all the customers they need their food to be delivered in next 30 minutes that was the perception that was the majority of the hints which we were getting based on what we were doing at that point of time but then we started doing some changes uh, in some of the areas we started providing more options to the customers which are even further to the customers they might not be we were we were telling up front you won't be able to get your order in 30 minutes we started providing them a range you might be able to get your order within next 45 to 60 minutes or 60 to 70 minutes and the order count had increased 
and mm. customers were satisfied as well and uh, riders were okay as well because for long distance order they were able to make more money though in the beginning the acceptance rate cancellation rate all those things went for a toss but then there was this opportunity which were lying for us and we were assuming this opportunity never exists the customers want their food to be delivered faster and faster but then we realized they want to order from the option they want to order from the restaurant where probably they might have a dine in or they are really specific about choosing some restaurants and they really don't care that the food gets delivered in next 30 minutes they are okay to do planning in a better way they are okay to get the food delivered in next 60 to 90 minutes so that has really helped us basically uh, get more orders get more revenue satisfy the customers which we were missing at that point of time yeah. that is just one example which comes to my mind i can talk about more but uh journey startups and companies specifically into food delivery they are very much adaptable to the changes in the behavior not just of the customer the restaurant behavior change as well uh, the riders behavior change as well so platforms need to adapt themselves as per their changing needs otherwise any other company who is their competition they might end up taking the advantage and they would be able to grow not you correct correct no no thanks a lot you have explained it in a very simple manner and easier to understand so i'm moving to the last section of our discussion today um coming to the supply chain as a field because it it's all about supply chain in in this delivery section and how to achieve a customer success success and help the other pillars of this whole ecosystem merchant platforms or riders so uh there are three there are three people one is a fresher uh mm-hmm. who has just graduated or about to graduate from a college he or she is very excited about uh getting into this industry either through on either through business model or either through joining a company or something they want to do well in this industry uh, achieve more customer success success enjoy the you know fast paced life of this part of the supply chain second person is who is already in the similar industry uh, not exactly what uh, you are doing but kind of related to what you are doing and wants to do the shift and the growth grow his or her career in the same field and third person is um who has done uh, very good in the supply chain in in different sections like sourcing or planning or something else nothing related to uh, food delivery but is very much interested to explore this uh, space maybe by joining some company or maybe moving from one uh, role to another role within the same company so uh-huh. for these three people in terms of skills and how they can approach this if you can guide so that whoever is watching this episode i i know that these are the three people who will primarily the major audience of this this episode so they will learn something from you from a practical point of view that how they can approach uh, this career in supply chain from skills point of view or any other guidance you want to give cool man very interesting look uh, me per se i did not chase this particular industry that this has just happened to me so before uh, delivery i was always into mobility uh but i was able to leverage my experience of mobility in delivery and i was able to reduce costs significantly so uh it's not like if you are into supply chain or into procurement or into some other field uh you you cannot as you it's not like you cannot do this i was able to do it i had never done it in the past and i'm enjoying uh, and i'm enjoying this truly i've learned so much so uh let's say for a fresher what do you need to do i think you just need to be street smart you just need to be looking at these opportunities i think companies look for freshers uh, generally at the starting level in, in such companies if you really want to be in logistics i think you need to you need to be a good communicator uh, with with the people for example you'd be negotiating with third party logistics companies you would have to manage right around boarding their daily operations uh you would have to be able to sort out the daily level problems which the riders might be facing so if you are able to interact well and you have some sort of understanding of how data works like at a very basic level you understand what is 1 plus 1 it's not 11 it's 2 
uh, and you are able to basically behave in a smart way, I think you would be able to make a cut. So you need not to do anything special. You just need to keep looking for opportunities, keep knocking the doors uh, of the companies who are looking to hire people like you. So no particular skill set is required. Uh, you just need to know the basics. You don't need to do any special course or something to be to to be a part of the logistics team in uh, within a food delivery company. Now, if we talk about uh, the second aspect, which you have asked for, someone who is into like uh, a traditional supply chain uh, kind of a business, I think uh, for them, uh, like all the food delivery companies, uh, I think almost all of them are venturing into this dark store or dark kitchens or they are starting uh, their raw material delivery business as well. I think that's where there is a lot to do with supply chain. There's a lot to do with warehousing. There's a lot to do with procurement. I think for you guys, uh, it could be an easy entry as compared to be able to just start managing the last mile delivery. A lot of people get confused with uh, basically assuming last mile delivery and supply chain. These are the same things now. These are two completely different things, though, yes, last mile delivery could be an overall part of the overall supply chain and logistics ecosystem. But the skill set which you have in last mile and the skill set which you have in supply chain, these are two separate different things. Supply chain is really, really a very, very wide ocean. You might be doing land transport, you might be doing uh, sea transport, you might be doing air cargo. Uh, so there's last mile over there, but that's pretty complicated. Over there, you're talking about days and weeks or in food delivery in last mile. Here, you're talking about seconds and minutes. So, And you have thousands or millions of data points which are available. So for uh, the second kind of people, I think it would be an easy entry for you guys to enter into the dark store, dark kitchen or the uh, raw material kind of delivery business. I think Zomato has something called Hyper Pure. So I'm talking about such businesses. Uh, it could be an easy entry for you guys to get into those businesses. And if you want to get into pure food delivery, pure last mile, I think moving uh, interdepartmental uh, movement, once you know about the company, once you know about the business, I think it would be an easy way out for you. Now, uh, third thing which you have said, I think if you are in a company which already does food delivery, but you're into supply chain, this, that, I think I would say uh, you... Uh, within the company your perception uh, your uh, basically your ability to do different things within your same role and your willingness to be able to adapt the change with these three things i think definitely a lot of people keep on moving internally externally as well uh, and i've seen in my previous companies people who have these three things with them their perception within the company is good. They are able to do multitasking. They have uh, performed several roles in the past within the company. And they are ready to change themselves. They are not very rigid. Uh, if a new role comes in, they wear the hat of that particular new role. And they are able to change themselves. If you have these three things in you, I think you would be able to make a movement from a supply chain department to a last mile or logistics department within a food delivery company. Nice, nice. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot summary, summarizing this because um, it becomes very important for people to first understand the topic and then see, okay, if this looks very interesting, how can I enter into this section of the supply chain or the profile which we are talking about? So, so thanks a lot. Again, thank you very much. Um, I personally learned a lot being a customer. And uh, this is a totally new thing for me as well. And I'm sure this will be a totally new thing for more, most of the people who will be watching this video. Thanks for having me, man. And thanks for reminding me all those bright days of mine. And uh, I, I I really felt like uh, we are planning some, some sort of big demand campaign which is coming up. And as a team, uh, this was more like a brainstorming session for me. So <laughs> thanks for... Uh, reminiscing uh, all those good days of mine and uh, thanks for having me here uh, i definitely think i think people out there would get some insights from the things which i've said over here uh, and it comes from right practical experience there is no uh, theory which i have provided over here all the examples all the case studies which i have provided they have personally happened with me and i've done those things through my hand and really look forward to uh, see your progress, Maninda. 
And if there is anything else which you need, please let me know.